My name is Gabriella Schuster, and I'm the general manager in our Windows client team back in Redmond. And today, I wanted to introduce a concept to you that we're going to call the flexible workspace. Actually, could you turn this down just a little bit? OK. Um, it's an evolution of a desktop strategy that will enable you to embrace the rapidly changing environment that we find ourselves in today, where devices, applications, and business policies are rapidly changing, and we find ourselves thinking about how do we adapt the technology strategy. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I spend a lot of time with customers like yourself in events like this, um, in one-on-one -on -one briefings back in Redmond, and in discussion panels online. And I think one of the primary topics of, of discussion with, um, with CIOs today is about the consumerization of IT. And how can we help business users in this dynamically changing environment? So, you know, what is the nature of the change? The nature of the change is really threefold. One, it's all about where people work, it's about when people work, and it's about the, the tools people use to get their work done. So, you know, people used to come to the office or go to a specific work site every day in order to get their work done. And now we work in conference rooms, we work, um, we work on the road, we work on the airplane, we work in the park, we work in the coffee shop, we work virtually anywhere. Well, in Seattle we work in the park because we don't get very many sunny days, so we go to the park. <laughs> and so we work virtually anywhere. And then we, because of the global economy, we work virtually any time. We may work early in the morning to catch some folks in part of the world or really late at night. We might have flexible hours so that you know, we can avoid traffic and stay home and work in the morning, go into the office later, or leave work early and work at home later. And so really, you can't predict when people are going to be online and when that work is going to transact. You used to be able to predict when you could bring servers down, when you could have downtime, when you could do updates. It's very unpredictable now. And it used to be that you could, you could really rely on people just to be working on a PC or a desktop. And now, with the proliferation of devices, people are working on all sorts of devices. They're working on desktops and PCs. They're working on netbooks. They're working on mobile phones. They're working on tablets. They're working on slates. They're working on this on multiple platforms. So just as you were thinking you were making headway and creating some sort of a standardization within your environment, suddenly everything changed. And you have the most diverse environment you've ever had before. So all this boils down to more and more choice for the end user, more choice in how they get their jobs done, and what devices they use, what applications they use, anywhere, anytime, on any device. This means users' expectations start to shift dramatically. They expect to be connected all of the time, not just for work, but to their personal friends, personal sites, personal activities. They want access to work anywhere, anytime. Today, people use their personal smartphones more than 50% of the time for business. I can be on a plane 30,000 feet in the air, like I was on my way here, connected to the Wi-Fi, working and collaborating with my colleagues, potentially on a slide deck for a keynote. <laughs> and you know, the only limitation of the work that I do is the time zone. And it turns out that's not really a technology issue that we can solve, right? So that's the, work, that's the world that we're living in today, where the lines between work and life are very blurry. You know, where I can be at my son's soccer game, and I can take a critical um, conference call, either on my phone or on my PC or any other device. People are more mobile with their technology. They have multiple devices. They're much more tech savvy than they've been, especially the younger generation. Right? My children are digital generation. They don't know a world without cell phones. They don't know a world without ubiquitous network connection and wireless connections. You know, my daughter said to me, well, Mom, how old were you when you got your first cell phone? I was like, don't even ask me that question. Okay. 
<laughs> right? And you know, they are, this generation thinks that they can do anything with technology that they can dream of. And they want it fast. They're very impatient about the technology. So it used to be, you know, that people came into their offices and then they would work and then they would go home, right? Things were pretty predictable, fairly simple. It was easy for you to secure that environment, both physically and with the technology within the four walls of your organization. They personalized that space but not the way we think about it today, right? They actually put up pictures and they had plants and they had drawings that their kids gave to them, right? And now people recreate that space through their devices. It's on all of their devices and they want it to follow them in all of their devices. They want to have all of those pictures right at hand. They, you know, grow plants on Facebook that they can have with them, right? And, you know, so this, this, is, this is not only about what's on the device, but also what the device looks like. They want a tremendous amount of choice so they can have a, you know, I want something that's pink, I want something that's red, I want something that reflects my mood. And so there's all sorts of new, new ways to personalize your environment environment today. Today people also use their personal home PCs more than 50% of the time for business. And likely you don't even know it, right? And, and it's not that they, you know, they didn't ask for permission. They just started finding things that worked and doing them. And it isn't because they had any sort of um, malice or an intent around that, they don't even know they're creating some business risk by working on their home PC. And there's this proliferation of devices, right? Like I said, phones, readers, tablets, in addition to PCs, laptops, netbooks. In just a short amount of time, the use of blogs and networking sites has grown 36% as the use of a business tool. And that's expected to actually grow 72% in the next couple years. So people have much more choice, much more flexibility in ways they get things done. Because there are ubiquitous networks everywhere, both secured and unsecured, people want to take advantage of them. So what that means is that your technology strategy is more important than it's ever been. People are coming into work with much higher expectations of IT. They want better devices, they want better applications, they want more options and freedom, they want faster, uninterrupted service. These growing expectations put increasing pressure on you to provide compelling solutions for business users while maintaining both a secure and well-managed environment for them. As consumers get their hands on smarter devices and applications, they're really excited to bring these into work, right? Um, and, you know, they, they see possibilities of how they can start using them. Things like blogs and social networks that really started for real personal use, suddenly they see ways that they can open up new markets by doing that. But they just expect that you're going to support them in everything that they find. And the technology for your stra strategy for your company then becomes even more important for you to put in place policies, business policies. And it boils down to just choice. Choice in how people get work done anywhere, anytime, on any device. So that's what our life is like today, right? So while consumerization does pose some risks and challenges, the benefits are significant. It's good for users and it's good for business. Organizations seeking to boost worker productivity and passion while remaining competitive in the marketplace today will benefit from embracing consumerization responsibly. We believe this is the power of saying yes to consumerization. And there's great opportunity for IT leaders to drive their companies through this transition in a safe and rational way. But how do you do it? How do you give safe, secure access to corporate resources? How do you manage the risk for your organization and still provide anywhere, anytime access on a variety of devices while keeping people productive without disruption? 
Well, people connect from anywhere on these multiple devices during the course of their day. They want their data. They want their applications. They want their wallpaper, their pictures, their settings. They want a uniquely personalized environment anywhere on all of their devices, right? And I know you guys want to give that to them. You want to give that to them, but you want to ensure that it is secure. So we want to help you. And we're going to help you provide two things to your users. One is a highly personalized, well-connected Windows experience with great devices. And two is unified management infrastructure that's comprehensive, that's streamlined, and that's intelligently delivered across all the devices in your environment, both your Windows devices and your non-Windows devices. So what I want to do is I want to go through a few scenarios of what that looks like to your users today. And I'm not here to sell you anything, because I think what you'll find as we go through this is this is technology that you already own. This is technology you have in your environment today. And what we want to share with you is how you can set it up to enable your users in these new usage scenarios. So we call this concept the flexible workspace. To us, that means it's a workspace that is enabled anywhere, that's highly personalized, and intelligently managed. Not only does it streamline the delivery of a traditional desktop, but it enables people to work on the road. It enables people to work on their own personal devices and work on the phone. It enables people to work in a highly personalized Windows environment that can either be powered locally or powered through the data center that's managed either by an infrastructure that's on-premise in your environment or an infrastructure that's in the cloud. There are a variety of scenarios that we could look at, but we've chosen just a few. Um, so what we want to do is enable you to enable your users and see how you can help them manage the risk for your organization and still get everything that they're looking for, everything we've been talking about. So what I want to do is I want to start with management, because management is really the backbone of any solution, of all of these solutions. So let's meet Ethan. Ethan is the lead desktop administrator in a multinational corporation. Ethan, he's a typical large enterprise IT guy, just like a lot of you guys. His users are all over the map. Some of them are really tech savvy, some of them aren't. Um, all of them want to use this range of mobile devices to get their work done, and they want them to be on the network. But Ethan's primary responsibility is to keep information secure and to keep costs down. As consumerization becomes a reality, though, Ethan faces the challenge of keeping his workers productive as they adopt the latest mobile technologies. Employees are demanding that they be able to conduct business on both corporate-owned and personal devices. So as I mentioned, they're using their mobile smartphones, they're bringing those to work. They're working at home on their personal machines. And they expect their application experience to remain consistent across all the devices in their environment. So Ethan needs to accommodate their demands while ensuring that corporate compliance, security, and budget requirements are all met. No easy task, I know many of you face that every day. So Ethan looks to System Center Configuration Manager. And he does that because it provides a unique, unified management tool to manage all his client desktops, his thin clients, his mobile devices, and his virtual desktops, all through the same simple infrastructure. It increases his manageability of all types of desktops and reduces the complexity and cost of implementing the virtual environments for him. It's efficient for IT because it allows that diverse environment using a single tool set. And it allows application delivery across multiple devices and multiple client platforms. So it also includes forefront endpoint protection, so he can ensure he has a single integrated platform for desktop security and compliance. System Center Configuration Manager 2012 provides the right experience for the user based on the user's identity and the device that they're logged into. So it's much more intelligent. 
As you heard from Robert this morning, at the Microsoft Management Summit in March, we announced that we're going to extend management to non-Windows devices as well. So let's talk through this scenario that we've chosen to provide to you. Configuration Manager 2012 can be designed and set up by you to deliver different applications in different ways to different devices. It can be very user-centric. So you can decide, and this example is just an example, that maybe you're going to deliver applications through an MSI or EXE to your desktops. And then you're going to deliver a different set of applications, or maybe even the same applications through AppV down to the laptops and the Windows slates in your environment, and then maybe to your non-Windows devices, you're going to just deliver those applications through remote desktop services. You can do all of that from a single back-end infrastructure. And you can use all of the same tools in order to deliver that down to the users. So you can decide, you know, based on the experience on those div different devices, based on where you want the data to reside or where you want, how you want those applications to show up, which applications you deliver to which devices in which mechanism. System Center Configuration Manager supports servers and desktops, virtual and physical environments, multiple platform devices from a single console. This makes IT more productive and efficient, so not only can you tailor your policies to your users, but to also a step further to the devices that they're using at the moment. So this is really critical. This is the critical part of your back end that enables you to provide a real intelligent infrastructure down to the front end. So now let's talk about the users. Let's meet Lisa. Lisa is like many of your remote workers. She works at home as her primary location, and she works from her own devices. She has both a um, tablet as well as a PC that she works on. She's a contract programmer in a medical office, and since she works from home on her own machines, the medical office really has no idea what might be on those devices, what those, on those personal PCs or tablets, and they don't want to manage them, right? But they're subject to HIPAA regulations on the patient data, so they need to make sure that, that none of that ever leaks out of their organization. So how do they do that? Well, in this circumstance, then, a VDI solution would be a great solution to deliver that information down to Lisa. There's no corporate, or corporate data left on Lisa's machines. There's a very high level of security because the data never leaves the data center. And the medical office IT staff can actually revoke her access at any time. Lisa can use whatever endpoint device she needs to, like her slate, like her PC, like her tablet, regardless of the operating system or the form factor. So they don't have to care about that. The only thing that's necessary is some way to make a connection between the device and the data center and the VDI VM. So one of our partners, Citrix, um, provides connections from most platforms, including Windows, iOS, and Android devices. So when Lisa's on a Windows device, she can also access that environment securely and directly from Internet Explorer and have a great experience. As an alternative way of delivering access to this corporate application, she can also use Office 365. So if the organization didn't want to set up all of that infrastructure in the data center in the back end, and she just needed access to um, some productivity applications, they could use Office 365 and deliver that down to her and provide her access to things like SharePoint, like Link, like Exchange, through a cloud infrastructure. So that's good for companies that haven't made that investment or that want to pay for those services more as a utility or that have a rapidly expanding or contracting set of users and they don't want to have to worry about building out infrastructure that, um, that will be, you know, that may be sitting idle for some period of time or making new investments. And nothing's hosted on premise. That's all in the cloud. And since everything is public on the public web, there's no VPN that would be necessary, and they can still have all of that same level of security that they're counting on. Now, in this same example, Lisa's environment in VDI can be managed through IT 
and we can help you make that a more cost-effective environment. We've made several investments to help you reduce the cost of that VDI environment. One of the biggest expenses is building out your data center and trying to get maximum density on your SAN devices of number of VMs. So we made a number of investments in things like dynamic memory so that you could increase the density. We made investments in things like AppV so that you can run a, run a single application cache on that SAN for all the VMs in it. And the applications themselves don't have to take up storage on each of the individual VMs. And users can access the same application simultaneously and still follow all of the same policies for the credentials and get the applications you've provisioned for them. So we've made a number of investments, again, to really enable you to optimize that back-end infrastructure as well. So let's move on to the next one. Let's talk about Blake. Blake is a salesperson for a major pharmaceutical company, and he travels a lot. And while he's on the road, he still needs to stay connected. Um, but mostly he does more lightweight work when he's traveling, right? He doesn't, doesn't dig in and do a lot of his hands-on activities. He just wants to connect to email. He needs his presentations. He needs the things that he's created, but he only needs to view them and consume them while he's traveling. When he's in the office, though, he's a power user. He likes to sit at a monitor that's like this big and have a high-performance laptop because he works on sales proposals that are really complex. He works on presentations. And he works on sales pipeline spreadsheets. And he likes to make sure he still has access to all of those things while he's traveling. But he doesn't actually have to create them while he's traveling. So he made a request, and he got provisioned through work a new Windows slate. Okay? And so that's what he's going to travel with. And he loves his new Windows Slate because it means that he still has access to the exact same environment that he had on his PC, but he can have that in a much lighter fashion, that he has access to all of his same applications, all of his same data, all of his same um, the office suite. He can have online and offline access that way. He can have access to his CRM application. And he prefers to have the same environment on both devices. Right? He didn't want to have to relearn or redo anything. And that enables him to be more productive while he's traveling. So because he works for multiple PCs and he can't afford to lose the data, and he, and he you know, He's a little forgetful, so sometimes he actually has lost some of his devices. So IT makes sure that he has BitLocker drive encryption on all of his devices so that even if his devices are lost or stolen, nobody can ever get at the data on those devices. So his IT department has actually set up what we call an optimized desktop in the back end, right? They've set up folder redirection so that all of the data, everything that he works on, automatically gets backed up for him. And it's available through offline files for him when he's not connected. We've also set up application virtualization, which enables him to have those applications follow him, regardless of what device he may be using, and enables IT to make sure that those applications are always up to date. Right? So, um, now, Blake's, now Blake brings in his new Windows Slate, and he, he doesn't have to worry about any kind of downtime. He's going on a trip tomorrow. He can immediately, because he's come in, he authenticates. Immediately, he gets an entire environment down, right down to his desktop, with all of his settings, all his personalization, his personalized Excel toolbars and everything else that he's created, all of his um, settings and everything else just come right down. And immediately, he has the exact same environment, and he's ready to go on his trip. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually try to make that a little bit more real for you. I'm going to invite Chanel Chambers, who's a product manager on my team, to come up. And she's going to show you exactly how this works with the technology, make it real for you. Chanel? Go Thank you. Gabriella? So in this demonstration, I'm just going to make that Blake scenario a little bit more real for everyone and show how you can have your personal applications, 
your data and your user settings on any PC you log into. I'll also show how you can have access to any of your corporate applications that you may need while you're on the road from an easy to use web catalog. Wow. Could we turn this down a little? Thanks. I'll also show how you can have uh, access to your applications from a web catalog that's also centrally managed by your IT department. So if I look at my main work laptop here, it's a, it's a pretty big, heavy laptop. Um, if I look at my programs fo folder, I can see that I have all of the programs that are available to me and my job role deployed to me through application virtualization. So here you can see that I have Office 2010 through Microsoft Application Virtualization. I also have Live Meeting 2007. And because these are deployed to me through application virtualization, I'm not going to get any conflicts uh, around having two different versions of Office installed on one machine. They're very well encapsulated, and they're also assigned directly to me and my job role. So if I look at my documents folder, I also have a folder redirection in offline files uh, deployed on this machine. So basically, all of my documents are backed up on the server. I don't have to do anything to do that. It's just automatic. And because of the offline files technology, I have all of my applications and data here in my documents library um, on any PC that I log into. So if I look at the sales data presentation, or the sales data spreadsheet, it's actually opening, when I click on that, it's opening through application virtualization, not from the C folder, uh, the, or not from the program files folder. Um, but from an end user standpoint, it still looks just like a regular application. So I have access to all of the uh, features of Excel. So if I want to insert a chart here, I can do that with no problem. So it looks and feels just like a regular Excel spreadsheet. Um, but in the background, I actually have the best of both worlds because as I get these applications through application virtualization, they're also uh, cached locally on the machine. So if I were to disconnect from the network and go traveling somewhere, I still have all my same applications available to me. So when I, I um, save this to my desktop, I'm going to save it as sales data with chart, just so I can find it later. And again, just, this is just like a normal application, even though it's an, a, a Microsoft um, application virtualization deployed application. So when I close that, it's actually closing through application virtualization now in the, down there in the right hand corner. And one of the things, as Gabriella mentioned before, one of the things that many people like to do with their uh, machines is to personalize them based on their personal interest or their work styles. So to that end, I am going to choose a different background. And if I look through all the themes here, I actually, I'm feeling kind of purple today, so I'll choose this purple flower as my background. You know, it makes my life interesting. And because I'm right-handed, I like to have my taskbar here on the right-hand side um, so I can get to it a little bit easier. So I'm finished with my work, so I'll go ahead and log off of that. And I'm actually going to switch over to my Slate PC because just like, just like Blake, I actually like to really travel light when I go um, out away from the office. So I have this Slate PC here, and when I switch over to it, um, this is really where the beauty of the flexible workspace really becomes apparent. Because when I log in to my Slate PC, Basically, because of all the desktop virtualization technologies that I have deployed in my environment, I'm going to be able to see all of those personalizations, all of my applications, all of my data sync to me immediately on my Windows slate. So as you can see here, I have my purple flower background, obviously. Um, I didn't have to do any syncing um, manually with that. If I look at my applications, I also see that I have those same applications, Microsoft Office, um, including my inbox, which is very important to me. I also have the, um, <clears throat> the live meeting, um, 2007 here, still through application virtualization. 
And if you look at my desktop here, if I open that sales data file, you can also see, let's see, let's open that sales data file. You can also see that the chart that I just put on my uh, work laptop is also here on my slate. So I didn't have to email myself the document. I didn't have to use a thumb drive or any sort of web syncing technology. It was just here, very natural for me as the end user with no problem. So that's one thing that about the flexible workspace that really makes it easy for end users. But when I'm traveling, obviously, what happens when you actually need an application? So I have this very urgent email from a colleague about a project plan. So obviously, I'm not an engineer. You know, just like Blake, I might be a salesperson. But this project plan here is a Visio document. And I don't have Visio installed on any of my computers because I don't usually need it. Now, usually if this were the case um, in a traditional environment, if I'm away from my office, I would have to call up the help desk. And the help desk would basically say, um, I'm sorry, you have to come back to the office so that we can install this. Or maybe if I'm high enough in the organization, they'll send somebody out to install it on my ma machine wherever I am. But either way, that's not really a good option because obviously I need to do this pretty quickly. And I don't want to have to generate a help desk call. Well, with System Center 2012, which is part of the flexible workspace, I, my IT department can actually deploy this very easy to use software catalog that has any application that, that is corporately uh, managed that I can pretty much just serve myself. So if I look at the software catalog, I can see that there is a version of Microsoft Visio here that I can just click and install. And it's just asking me if I want to install the selected software. And if you look here on the desktop where I have that project plan, once that installs, that icon will light up and I'll be able to use it. This is actually installing, again, through Microsoft Application Virtualization. So if my IT department has set it up um, in order for me to see this on all, of my or on all of my desktops, it will also follow me wherever I log in. So as you can see, that project plan has now lit up. I can open it. It's opening through application virtualization in the background. And now I can see that project plan. I can make any comments that I need to. I can get back to my colleague with no problem. So in this, in this demo, I basically showed how you can have a desktop that is completely and totally unique to you on any machine that you log into on, uh, in your corporate environment. And I'm going to invite Gabriella back up so she can discuss how you can have anywhere access to your corporate resources, um, basically from anywhere with an internet connection. Thanks, Chanel. <laughs> so keep that in mind, the, the um, optimized infrastructure, optimized desktop that Chanel just showed you we would recommend that you have that on all of your PCs, right? So regardless of any of these scenarios, even if you're just running traditional desktops, we really recommend that that is the ideal way that you would set up the backend infrastructure. And I'm not going to talk more about those. I'm going to move on. But just imagine in all the rest of these scenarios that that is what we have set up in the backend. So now let's meet Frank. Frank is a lot like, um, a lot like me. He's, he's on the road a lot. He's an architect. He works literally everywhere, right? He's outside. He's inside. He's in like partially finished buildings. And so as you can imagine, he doesn't often have great access and connection. Um, not great Wi-Fi signals in those partially finished buildings, right? So he often uses mobile broadband and tethering to connect to the internet. Since he's in constant communication with his team of designers and engineers and contractors, he needs to be able to collaborate on an ongoing basis. And he, so he uses Link in order to continue to have that dialogue with all of his colleagues in a very safe and secure manner. Um, he also needs constant access to the SharePoint sites because they collaborate well together on all, of their on all of their documents. They often frequently change. And they keep them all in that one secure spot so that they can all share everything that's going on. 
So since Frank works with engineering plans in this shared workspace, he needs to have easy access through the firewall to corporate server resources um, wherever he is. Direct access gives him the ability to connect to these corporate resources regardless of whatever connection he's using, whether that's the mobile broadband, Wi-Fi, or Ethernet. Now, in, in, in speaking about that intelligent infrastructure, because they're also using Configuration Manager in the background, it also has the intelligence to know if Frank is connected through a 3G network and it's costing him money, they're not going to start a bunch of services up. They're not going to start patching or updating his machine while he's connected to that. And so those are policies that you can enable so that it would wait until he was back on a free wireless connection or a hard wire connection or something before it started to spin up services that take up a lot of bandwidth. So it, other, the other pain point that you would have with people like Frank is that because he like rarely comes into the office, it's hard for you to know when you can patch and update his machine or you know, where he is. With direct access, because it's a two-way connection, you can actually find his machine and anytime he's connected to the internet and you can send down security patches and updates. And like I said, because of the intelligence and the infrastructure, it'll make sure that it's doing that when he's on a good connection that doesn't cost him a lot of money. So now because he is very mobile and because he does kind of have this on and off access to a connection, um, he also needs to work with um, documents locally. And so um, he's using application virtualization that enables him to do that. And um, he'll sync up later whenever he actually does get a good connection. He also uses BitLocker Drive encryption because these are sens this is sensitive information. And he doesn't want, he, you know, he could end up leaving his laptop at a job site. He doesn't want anybody else to be able to access it. So it gives him that added security of knowing that that information isn't going to get into anyone else's hands. Now, Frank's, um, Frank also is an avid photographer, and he likes to take pictures not only of his friends and his family and the places he's been, but of all of his work. And because those are very large files and he creates video files and everything else, he doesn't actually like keeping that locally on his machine either. And so he has a SkyDrive, and on his SkyDrive, he keeps all that personal information. And so he gets like a ton of storage up there, and he can just use that and access the, that from any of his devices. And that works just as well for him as well. So he's, you know, he's a lot like me. He may be a lot like you guys. Like I work on the road, not, it's probably not 50% of the time, but I work on the road a lot. And I find it really annoying if I have to use a VPN connection and I have to, I'm working through something and somebody sends me a link to a SharePoint site and I have to then stop what I'm doing and connect and it could take 10 minutes or sometimes it doesn't work and if there's too many people trying to connect at the same time, I have to wait. And that's, that can get really annoying to me. It's very disruptive to my work. But because I use direct access now, I don't have that challenge. As soon as I log into my machine, I'm automatically connected to all of my corporate resources. And I can get to any SharePoint site that people send to me that has all my information on it. And I can get into, you know, make my travel arrangements or approve expense reports or, you know, dialogue and I am with my peers. And so I don't have to think about that anymore. It gives me that immediate in, um, access that I'm looking for. So now I want to move on and I want to talk about Holly. Holly is the CFO and while she does the majority of her work on her PC, um, she wants to be connected all the time because people are constantly asking her. The CEO is calling her, the board of directors calls her, uh, analyst relations, and they want facts and figures. They want to know where are we at, what's our revenue look like, what's going on. So she needs to have the latest access to financials and spreadsheets always at her fingertips. But Holly is a busy mom, and so her preferred um, access device when she's on the road is her phone. So she wants to use her phone both for work and life, and her Windows 7 phone really enables her to do that. Um, it supports Exchange ActiveSync, so that means Holly can sync her email and her calendar and her contacts. But it also comes with 
Office Mobility by default. So she can use Office Mobile and have all of those Office applications locally on her phone. And it can be managed by you, by IT, to set things like password policies and lock screen timeout as well. So it's a great device both for her and for you. Because she can um, natively um, access all of the Office um, productivity applications without it, you know, purchasing any additional viewers or any additional software, she can also edit and comment on these files and save them off to SharePoint. Um, or she could save them locally on her phone so that they have, they're, they're accessible to her when she's in something like airplane mode. Right? And then everything just would sync back when she re got reconnected or off of the plane. The documents will simply sync in the background. Now alternatively, again, if you didn't want to build out that on-premise infrastructure of Exchange and SharePoint, you could also use Office 365. And that would also give Holly access to the back end to enable her to use that from her phone and to store files up there and to retrieve files and bring them down. So once again, I'm going to invite Chanel up to give you a demonstration and make this more real for you. Thank you. Let's go over here. Okay. <laughs> so in this demo, I'm just going to take a few minutes to show how you can have that easy and secure access to all of your corporate resources from your work machine and how you can extend that productivity experience to uh, your mobile device with Windows Phone 7. So here I'm on my work laptop, and this is actually my real work laptop, so if anything pops up, you know it's, it's for real. Um, I can see that I have an urgent message from my manager, Jason, and basically he's telling me that I need to fill out my expense report immediately, because if I don't, the hotel that I'm staying in um, here at TechEd um, is going to throw me out, basically. Um, <laughs> And he's been nice enough to tell me uh, what that link to the expense report application is so I can pretty much do this um, as soon as I, I possibly can. Now, I'm going to stop here just for a moment so you can envision yourself in this situation because it was not so long ago that in order for me to complete this urgent task, I would have to dig in my bag to try to find my smart card reader, you know, find my smart card, put it in there, start my VPN connection. Gabriella mentioned that, you know, sometimes it doesn't work and it takes a long time sometimes and this would be something that I might actually put off and not get done. But with direct access, none of that is necessary. Since I'm connected to the internet, I'm also um, always connected to my corporate resources. So when I click on that link, I actually get directly taken to my expense report application. I can verify my expenses. I could click submit and I'm pretty much done. I had no problems with that at all. I was already connected to the internet. This works if you're on mobile broadband or Wi-Fi or even a, a direct hardwired ethernet connection. And so from an end user standpoint, it's very easy for me to get my work done. But again, as Gabriella mentioned, it's also good for IT because IT doesn't have to wait for me to come back into the office or wait for me to connect through the VPN in order to manage my laptop. So I can get group policy updates, any sort of security patches, et cetera, et cetera, directly from my IT anytime I'm connected to the internet. So this really helps my IT department keep all of those mobile laptops and any other devices that aren't on the network very often um, secure and up to date. So any discussion of the flexible workspace, especially today in 2011, wouldn't be complete without talking a little bit about how we're extending that productivity experience to mobile devices, specifically uh, Windows Phone 7. So here on my PC, I have um, my team site that's actually built using SharePoint Online, part of Office 365. And 
I have a sales presentation in the employee handbook here on my PC that, I can, that I've always used, but this SharePoint application has become much more useful to me now that I can actually view it on my phone. So this is my Windows Phone 7, and you can see up here that I have the Office Hub. And if I click on the Office Hub, you can see that in, my, in the SharePoint part of the Office Hub, I have those two applications synced on my phone all the time. So even when I'm offline, um, I can actually see the sales presentation. I can also scroll over here and get to the documents. I can basically traverse the entire tree. But if I open that sales presentation, it's opening directly, since I do have a connection, it's opening directly from that SharePoint site. So I can view, and now I, when I glance through this presentation, I can see that someone has misspelled my name, again, on the team uh, page. This happens a lot. It's, it's one N, it's not channel, it's Chanel, like the perfume. So I can actually open this and make that edit directly from my phone without my PC. So if I do that, I just click this checkbox and I can verify that that change is correct. And then by opening, and choosing save, it's going to save right back up to the SharePoint site. So anyone else on my team um, will now get the most current version of the sales presentation. And I didn't even have to open my PC to do that. I could make a quick change with no problem and save it right back up to SharePoint. So in this demonstration, I've shown how you can have anywhere access to your corporate resources from a lot of different devices. I've also talked a little bit about Office 365 and how you can manage your productivity infrastructure directly from the cloud. So I'm going to invite Gabriella up again so she can talk about how you can also manage your Windows PCs from the cloud. Thanks, Janelle. So now let's meet David. David's back in IT. He works for a company that has many pockets of PCs that are not supported by Active Directory. Some of these PCs come from acquisitions and haven't yet been connected to the do corporate domain. Others are issued to part of the company's highly distributed workforce where um, they were never connected to the domain. But the, the challenge is that he still want to, wants to make sure these remote field representatives um, have managed machines. They're not managed today, um, but he wants to give them some level of Windows update, some level of security. He wants to understand the inventory, and he wants to be able to um, put malware protection on them. So he wants to be able to keep track of their hardware and software inventory as well for compliance purposes. But he doesn't really want to deploy new infrastructure. That why he, that's why he hasn't done it yet, right? And he doesn't want to invest in new distribution points to make that happen. So for him, Windows Intune is a great solution. Windows Intune provides the essentials of management and protection, including Windows and Office updates, patching, inventorying, and malware protection. And since there's no infrastructure requirements, David has fewer servers to maintain, and he can manage these PCs whenever they're connected to the internet. He doesn't have to um, you know, have the users send, his, to send him the machine and do something and install something for them. Um, he doesn't have to have local distribution points for this. He doesn't need to deliver a VPN client. He can simply either include Windows Intune in the original image that he sends down to these machines, to these users, or he can send them an email with a link to an EXE that's at the Windows Intune site, gives them full instructions. All they do is click on it and installs the agent, and immediately he has perfect insight into their machines. He understands what level of patching they have, what they're using, what the inventory is for their software and their hardware, and he can start managing those machines immediately. It's very simple, and it's all done through this web-based console. And what I would encourage all of you to do is to actually go out to the Windows Intune 30-day trial, download it on a few machines, and just see how easy that is to understand and see what's going on in the environment. But I'm going to also invite Chanel back up to show you Windows Intune. Okay. 
Thank you. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to um, show you basically how Windows Intune helps you uh, manage your updates and your security, uh, basically malware protection, and a little bit of the hardware and software inventory that we have built into Windows Intune. When I log into my Windows Intune console, in this case, this, uh, this account is the Northwest Traders account, which is an import-export company, I can see that I have a few different options here on the, on the left-hand side. I'm not going to walk through all of them, but I'll go over the ones that are the most interesting. Um, the first one here is the computer inventory. Basically, I get a listing of every computer in my environment. And I can see very, at a glance very quickly what I have, what their computer names are, et cetera, et cetera. I also can manage my updates and endpoint protection over here. So as Gabriella mentioned, I get all of my Windows updates and my Office updates that I can approve or set when I want those updates to be applied to my Windows Intune machines. And the endpoint protection that's included in, in Windows Intune is actually using the same uh, malware protection engine as forefront endpoint protection. So you're actually getting that enterprise grade uh, security along with your Windows Intune subscription. And down here is the administration console where I can get that Windows Intune agent that Gabriella mentioned. So you can come to our booth if you want to see the rest of, of all of these things and Windows Intune in action. But I'm going to move over here to the middle pane. Um, where you can see the system status. Now I'm getting a an overview of my entire environment here, and I see that the most important thing here is that I have one malware instance on a computer in my environment. So if I want to find out a little bit more about that, I have timed out, so I will just... So I want to find out a little bit more about that. And I clicked on that, and I see that it's actually the CEO's machine. So the CEO of uh, Northwest Traders um, had a little problem with the machine. So I'd like to see a little bit more about that. I click on the machine, and I see that not only does he have a malware instance, but he also has a couple of updates that I need to approve. But the malware is obviously the more pressing problem. So I will click on malware, and I see that um, the program Fake Ad Pro has basically threatened this machine. But fortunately, the malware uh, protection did block this exploit. But considering that um, the, the CEO has been installing a bunch of software, I just want to check what software is on his machine just to see if everything looks right. So I click on the software tab. And basically, this is giving me a nice list of all of the software that's on the CEO's machine at this time. And you know, I'm scrolling through it. I don't really see anything unusual. I do see that he has Gears of War installed, but he's the CEO. So I guess it's OK. He can play Gears of War as much as he wants. Um, I also see down here that he's running Windows 7 Enterprise Edition. And this is really important because the Windows Intune subscription actually comes with rights to Windows um, 7 Enterprise, so that if you would like to have the Enterprise features on all of your devices in your environment, you can do that. So to that end, I, I'd like to see which, uh, which computers in my environment actually have Windows XP, um, so I can make sure to have those upgraded to Windows 7 Enterprise, since I do have the rights to do that. So, I'm going to click on the software tab here. And basically, I can do a search for Windows XP in the search pane. So this is showing all the software in the entire environment. But I just want Windows XP. So I search. And basically, it's telling me I have two machines with Windows XP mode. But I also have 35 machines here that are still on Windows XP. And if I click there, I can get a, a good list of those so I can follow up. So I've just given you a quick overview of how Windows Intune can help you manage your hardware and software inventory and also your, um, your updates and malware. And I will invite Gabriella back up so she can summarize basically all of the things that we've discussed with the flexible workspace.
So like I said, I would encourage you to go out and, and uh, take a look at the 30-day trial. You'll notice that um, this is pretty basic, right? Right now, this is basic software management. Um, and over time, our intention is to continue to expand what is in Windows Intune so that it is best of breed, best of class, enterprise security and management. Everything that you have on premise, eventually you'll be able to do through Windows Intune. So that's our stated intention and vision for the product. So, you know, what we've done for you today is pulled out just a few of the key scenarios. Obviously, there's overlap among these scenarios and the way that you might set them up in your environment. And, you know, you can set, we've separated them to really try to make the highlights of each scenario clear. What we've been able to do is show you how you can create that anywhere connection to be able to en enable your users to work on the road, to work, to bring in their own PCs, to work on their phones how you can enable that in a highly personalized environment that's uniquely yours, and how that can be powered by an intelligent infrastructure unified by a single back-end management platform across all devices, both Windows and non-Windows devices, managed either locally or powered through the cloud that enables optimization for scenarios like VDI in your environment. Now these scenarios will continue to, to evolve as we release new products and as we release new devices. And really the, the flexible workspace we see as our platform to continue to extend um, and expand over time. So as I said from the beginning, the same technologies that you use today to manage and secure your environments today that you own and have been planning to use as part of your Windows 7 deployment through an optimized desktop, those are the same licenses, the same products you can use in these new usage scenarios. So I'm not trying to sell you anything new. You can deliver a great user and device experience, and you can choose to continue to manage that either on-premise, in a private cloud, or in a public cloud. And we have a broad ecosystem of partners, many of which are right here at TechEd and you can talk to, that will help us continue to expand the usage scenarios and enable us to continue to provide even greater services to our users and to you. So I would encourage you to, to attend the expo, to come to our booth, to go to the booth of our partners and find out more about what we can do to help you. So what is your path to the flexible workspace? Well, it's just a simple five-step process, right? Um, step one is to assess your business needs. This is probably the hardest part. It's really for you internally to your organization to assess your risk profile. What are you willing to let users do? How is your environment changing? Um, what, do you, what kind of business policies do you want to put in place? What kind of contracts do you want to have with employees? If you, help, if you let them bring their own devices in, are you going to you know, sign contracts with them that says, you know, I'm going to trade off um, access to corporate resources for access to your device? Right? What level are we going to go to? Now, that's not just a technology statement at all. That is a business statement. So you want to work with legal and HR and finance to figure out what that means to your organization and set up those business policies so that your technology can follow the business as opposed to leading the business through the technology. Right? Step two is to understand your users. We've gone through a number of different user scenarios to show you that not all user needs are the same and that users, not only are their, their needs not the same, but depending on where they are and what they're doing and what device they're using, their need is not the same. And so that's an element that you want to figure out. You want to start to segment and profile your users, knowing that it's okay not to drive that standardization on top of them, that it's okay to enable them to have those different needs, and that you can manage that all because you have that intelligent back-end infrastructure without a lot of overhead. And so you want to think about a few vectors about your users. How mobile are they? What level of technology autonomy 
do you want to provide to them in doing that? And then what kind of devices do they use and what kind of content do they work with? Because again, not all content is equal. Some sales content is nearly public. You might be okay with you know, providing better access and more access to that without a lot of control. Some, some data, like financials, is highly secure and you'd never want that to actually leave your organization, right? Then step three is where the technology comes into play. That's where you want to consider the essentials for the organization. Right? You want to think about how your data is managed and how it's protected, how your applications are deployed, what applications are in your environment, how your hardware is managed, how your network is maintained. Um, and then step four is to think about some of these enabling technologies we've talked about today desktop virtualization, maybe server virtualization. You want to also think about cloud services, both productivity cloud services like Office 365, as well as management services like Windows Intune. And then step five is talk to us. Talk to your account manager. Talk to us at the booth. Talk to your partners. Think about those user populations, maybe the ones that are most difficult, and start a pilot program. See how it works. See how you can set it up within your own organization. So what we've done is we've actually identified a few of the sessions that give you follow-on content to this. So we've given you a broad brush. We haven't demonstrated everything. Um, and there's a lot more that you can see. So you can go to the config manager session, and they're going to do a multi-device, a mobile device management um, demo in that. You can go to the VDI session. You can actually see our VDI structure at work across multiple devices and thin clients. Um, you can go to um, session to learn more about consumerization or sessions to learn more about our cloud services like Windows Intune or Office 365. So, um, so with that, I just want to remind you to please complete an evaluation. Um, it's important and uh, you can win lots of really free cool things. And um, you know, I'm happy to, to stay here and take a few questions um, at the mics and um, whatever we don't get to, we could probably take you know, three or four burning questions and whatever we don't get to, Chanel and I will be up here following the session to take any follow-on questions.